Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 9.45 a.m. virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Let's join together with our opening chant being led by Mr. Dean Regan. <laughs> of spirit on earth and who you are and all you do is a blessing to the world I am the heart I am the hands I am the voice of spirit on earth and who I am and all I do is a blessing to the world we are the heart the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth, and who we are, and all we do is a blessing to the world. And so it is. So let's know that truth at an even deeper level as we join together in prayer. And so let us take this moment right here, right now, to turn within and to allow ourselves to let that part of us that can sense beyond the physical senses, that part of us that can sense our connection to everything and everyone, that part of us that knows itself to be one with the one life the one true power, the one infinite love and intelligence that is God. I absolutely know that that presence of God is fully and equally present throughout creation, just needing to be realized and embraced to come forth into an expression of itself here on earth. I know that I exist as an emanation of this life, as does every person gathered together for this virtual service this morning. And so knowing that God is present throughout all that unfolds, I speak my word for our service this morning, knowing that spirit is ever so present as that vibration of love in which we feel our connection. I know it is present as the love of all those who are of service this morning. I absolutely know we are touched and uplifted and inspired by it through our music ministry, through Sam and Karen and our soloist Darius, and through our chants led by Dean. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect message of the divine through Dr. Mark today. That we hear what we have come to hear to awaken to that 
presence within us and to experience it more fully. And so I'm giving thanks right here in this moment for all the blessings that I know we receive by being together this morning. And in absolute gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, our time is blessed, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so let's join together in our congregational chant. It's in every one of us to be wise. Okay, so now's the time when we give ourselves the gift of just getting still and meditating, communing with that presence within each and every one of us. So I invite you to just get still, wherever you are, to close your eyes, take a nice deep breath and relax into that as you release it. And for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Silently repeat that over and over again, and I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
So many choices in the world today Too many things can blow your mind And if you're needing just a simple truth To see you on your way free to play You can hold it down or let it breathe And if you're looking for a simple song to sing along the way Hey, great. Thank you, Darius. Wonderful, wonderful. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, it's good to be with you. Thank you for joining us as part of our virtual community. Uh, I'm going to talk today a little bit uh, about hope, which I think is interesting for us in the science of mind, because usually in our philosophy, we talk about knowing. But I was thinking about where does knowing come from? And I think it starts with a seed. And that seed is hope. Um, that hope is the foundation of our faith, uh, because hope is like that little mustard seed. It's just a tiny glimmer in our mind um, that I believe is the infinite. It's God, it's spirit within us saying to us again and again, this could be better. This could be expanded in some way. This could be uh, an experience that works for everyone involved. Um, and so I think that hope is that first step we take. Hope is that first piece that moves us from an experience of crucifixion to the experience of resurrection. In A Course in Miracles, it says, we must look at the crucifixion but not dwell on it. Now, I think that what we'll do most of the time is they experience crucifixion and they move in. I mean, they really, they set up a tent. It's like, okay, this is the way my life is going to look. This is the way the world is going to be from now on. But, you know, <laughs> we bring pain to the surface not for the purpose of wallowing in it. We bring pain to the surface so that it can be released, so that it can be let go, never to return again, so that spirit can reveal something new in the place where that pain used to be. Right? Now, if your body gets a splinter, think of this, you get a little splinter in your finger, right? We've all had this happen. And if you don't get the tweezers and take the splinter out right away, the body works to create an environment, a condition where it will 
work to eject the splinter from you. You know, your finger will get all red and it'll get painful. And eventually that splinter starts to work its way out. It's much better to just go after it rather than wait for that to happen. Um, but uh, we are not the pain. This is the distinction I want to make. We are not the pain that we have been through. And I know everybody, everybody has been through difficulties, right? But hope, I believe, is God within us saying, keep moving forward. Don't give up. This can be better for you. This can be better for everyone. Now, we have a tremendous capacity to grow beyond circumstances. You know, in our culture, we all know a lot about the experience of crucifixion, right? I mean, I probably don't have to say a lot about that. We, know, we experience tons of crucifixion in this day and age. We've had crucifixion in our relationships, right? We've had crucifixion in our work life. We've had crucifixion in our health. We've experienced crucifixion in our finances. So we are a culture, we are a people who are very, very familiar with the experience of crucifixion. But the whole point of crucifixion is to get to the resurrection, right? Because this is, this is the, uh, this now, the time that we are living in, I think that our world is ready and preparing for a major, major resurrection, major resurrection on the face of our earth. Because a crucifixion without a resurrection is really, really a meaningless experience. You know, we talk a lot in our church about the darkness and, and the light. We talk about the darkness, we talk about the light. And the way to make the darkness go away is to add the light. We're not here to like fight with the darkness or muscle it or anything. I think we're, we're more comfortable though with pain than we are with pleasure. At least that's so for many people. Why? Well, because pain is very familiar. People often have some level of discomfort, some level of error, some level of false belief that's out picturing in their life. And what that does necessarily is because is that causes pain. Why does it cause pain? Because that false belief, that error condition is a belief that we are separate from God, which is never, ever, ever the truth. So sometimes, you know, maybe people get a little bit of a payoff when they talk about the error condition, you know, because, you know, sometimes it might feel good to hear, oh, you poor baby, oh, you poor dumb thing, oh, you poor dumb stupid thing, things never work out for you. But, you know, that's, that's just some very particular cases. Um, it is... It is known by all of us that pain gets our attention. And I think when things go well, so often we dismiss that. This could not be an important learning opportunity because it's so easy, because it's so pleasant, because it's so loving. So crucifixion basically is an energy, right? Everything is energy, we teach that. It's, it, it's, a, it's a pattern, right? And, and, and we could say for our purpose today that crucifixion is anything that's in any way hurtful to, to, to ourselves or someone else. Now, resurrection occurs when we see things differently, right? Because we really believe that statement of Jesus. It's done unto you as you believe. So if we can look at our life and look at our world and say, you know, I see peace among all people. There will be resurrection. If I can look at the world and say, I see a world where everyone is treated with dignity and respect, there can be resurrection. You know, I, I, I see a world where there is a cure for this virus. There can be a resurrection. See, I think we have to conceive of the healings and know that they are possible, you know, because there is a way in the infinite mind of God that it can all work out. And it's beyond anything we've seen or done in the past. Because if we had seen it or done it in the past, we'd probably be trying it now. But the thing is, we have to be open we have to be that opening in consciousness for something greater from the infinite mind of God to come into us and then get expressed out in the world. What we teach is that what we focus on increases, right? We would probably all agree with that. What you focus on increases. And so if what you look at in the world today is, oh, the world is in so much trouble, I don't know how we're going to, that will increase, right? But if what you know is that there is an inherent goodness in all people, and I believe that with all my heart and soul, I believe that people are basically, basically good. At the very core, people are good because people are of God, and that means that people are of love. So that's why I believe that people are basically good. You know, so what I ask myself today is, what am I going to do? 
Will I focus on all the crucifixions in my life in the world, or will I focus on the power of resurrection? Will I focus on the healing that is trying to emerge? See, God created all of us as creative beings. Everybody has free will, everybody has choice, and everybody has an infinite capacity to grow and to heal and be more than we have ever been before. God has endowed us with this creative capacity, with this creative power. Power to what? Well, to create a life in a world that would work for everybody. I mean, could we stretch our thinking to just imagine that we live in a world that's good for everybody? Now, I know that's, that's, that's some big thinking, right? But in the mind of God, that's available right now. We don't have to humanly figure out how this is going to happen. Our job as spiritual students is to know that in the mind of God, that there are already solutions to all problems. There are already answers to all questions. In Science of Mind, we have a very big idea of God, admittedly. The God that we believe in is infinite, infinite, right? And, and, and infinite love and intelligence. And if God is infinite, and I believe it is, there is enough for everyone, enough of everything for everyone. Don't we know that God is within us? I mean, we teach that. That's foundational to our our philosophy here, and our awareness of this connection, you know, you know, that God is within us, our awareness of this connection is the source of all good in our life. You and I are connected with the source of everything good. Our, our good, everyone's good, is ordained by God. But you know, there is such agreement in the world for the power of error, for the power of false belief, for the power of the darkness. There just seems to be a lot of agreement for that, right? And I think, well, we've just lapsed into that just the way it is. You know, this is just the way it is. That's what people say. Well, you can't do anything about it. This is just the way it is. That's a false belief right there. That is error thinking. To say, this is just the way it is. You can't do anything about it. That's been done for far too long. In the infinite mind of God, for each and every one of us, for the world that we live in, there are possibilities that we have not even dreamed of yet. So first, I want to say we do not really believe that we are spiritual beings. And I would say that's the first thing that holds us up. We identify more with this physical body, that I'm a human and I have a little spirit somewhere. Somewhere in here there is spirit. And the fact is we have that completely reversed. The fact is you are this big, infinite spirit. And you happen to have a little old body right now while you're here on earth. Right? The unseen part of us is much greater than the seen part. That means the spirit, the divinity that we are, is much greater than this, this human spacesuit that we are inhabiting right now. Our humanity is one step along an infinite continuum of infinite spirit. Right? We are infinite spiritual beings. We're not, as people like to say, oh, only human. Right? Spirit is eternal. It's immortal. It's ongoing. And the second thing that really sticks with me is, is that we don't believe that there is enough. This is that universal doubt I talk about. We don't believe that there's enough love, that there's enough wealth, that there's enough opportunity, that there's enough supply, that there's enough time. So what I think the solution to this is, is that we must all be that opening in consciousness for a greater possibility to come forth. Someone has got to be the opening in consciousness. You know, it's like... Um, holding the space, but I'm talking about holding the space from a place of consciousness and from a place of prayer and from a place deep within our heart, our heart that's very open, and also from a place of taking action and focusing on love and that we are all, all connected, right? We have to put feet to our prayers is what I'm talking about. I don't choose to hang out in the crucifixion. I know. I know you know. We have all been there. We have had more than enough crucifixion in our life. We all know the pain is just too great. The cost is too high. So our desire for love, for the light, the healing, oneness, has to be greater. You know, greater than what? Well, greater than what we have known or experienced up until now. 
So for longtime metaphysicians, I know there are many of you who've read years long ago, uh, Jane Roberts, the Seth material that came through Jane Roberts. And I remember reading in, uh, in some of that material, the generation that brings peace will not be the generation uh, that brings war. It will be the generation that loves peace. Right? I'm sorry, the generation that brings peace will not be the generation that hates war. It will be the generation that loves peace, right? So hating something is not the way to change it, right? Uh, resurrection is our shared belief that it can all be better. And so I want to ask you today, do you have some, even a tiny little hope of a belief that it can be better? And if you do, we can work with that. We can grow that. We can feed that. We can nurture that. We can see that expand in ways so that it ultimately covers the entire earth. Um, I think it can be good for everyone. I do. I don't know how this can happen, but I think life can be extremely good for every man, woman, and child living on the face of the earth. Now, I know it could be really easy to just say, oh, it's too much. It's gone on too long. I'm just depressed. It, 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 without doing much, the thinking of the world will take you to depression. It will. But, and, and that, to me, is crucifixion. Do not give in. Do not give in. The resurrection comes when we believe in the power of love, the power of love to heal. The Bible says or it says in the Bible, I will give back to you the years the locusts have eaten. Everyone, everyone, bar none, is a perfect child of God. And sometimes we forget, and we don't act that way. But regardless, regardless how people behave, what is real about people is the love. That's what's important. And you know, sometimes we demonstrate it, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's really evident, and sometimes it's not. So we're just working toward it being more evident more of the time. We teach God is all there is, which is like saying we teach that love is all there is. But you know, even Peter, who was so close to Jesus, denied him three times. And I think we deny the power of love to heal. See, that's what it is. We deny that we are a place where God can shine its light by means of us like no place else. See, the love of God is greater than the forces of this world. That's the bottom line here. The, and that love has to be demonstrated by us. So Jesus said this. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, in my years in ministry, I've been to lots of holy places. I've been to uh, Lourdes in France a couple of times. Um, I've been to Fatima a couple of times. I've been to Medjugorje. I've been to Nock. I've been to other um, big, not particularly Christian healing sites. And, um, and healings happen at, at, at these places. At all of these places, <coughs> documented healings have taken place. So what that shows us is that it's possible it shows us that that's available. And I believe for everyone, those healings started with a tiny little bit of hope. See, we understand how consciousness works. That if we are definite, the universe is definite in response to us. But if we are vague and wishy-washy, the universe is kind of vague and wishy-washy in its response back to us. But God has created all, all, all that we see, all that we don't see, <clears throat> is created by God. So when I think about that, I think about vast universes and solar systems and, and oceans and stars. That's the power. That's the power that created the universe. Now, God loves all of us, and I believe that God wants for every one of us to be happy. I believe that all things are always ultimately working for good. So I don't have to control everything. The universe is based on everything being right for everyone, right? There is a perfect divine design that's always unfolding. And each and every one of us, we have a part to play in that design. We are part of that design. You know, the circumstances out here in the outer world <clears throat> are changing all the time. People come into our life, they go out of our life, things happen, then something else happens. But those circumstances that we go through, and I realize so many of them are so difficult, 
we must remember, and this is important because this is a spiritual strength, is that we are not those circumstances. Those circumstances, that's not who we are. Now, what we do with the events of our life, what we do in circumstances, I think that actually determines who we are. That shows what we are really made of. So everything we do carries the consciousness or carries the energy with which we do it. And so hope means everything we go through, everything we experience. Hope is the idea that all of it, all that we go through, all that we experience is a setup for a big resurrection. I believe the world that we live in right now is preparing for a great big resurrection. That's another way of saying a great big healing. It is really time. And we all know this. I think on some level, everybody knows it could be better, it could be different, it could be good for everyone. Could we stretch our minds and open our hearts that much that we are willing for it to be good, really good for everybody? Not just people outside of us, but us as well. That includes us. You know, we are so much more than what's taking place out here in the outer world. We are each a place where hope springs eternal in the inner world. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to remember that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that the principle, the power, the presence of God, the living spirit almighty is right here within and around and through each and every one of us. I know every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth is an emanation of God's love, that we are all connected in the mind and in the heart of God, and therefore we are all one. So because I know this, I speak this word as one who has authority, as one who has faith and hope and belief and confidence that things are unfolding right now in a way that is harmonious and loving and will produce a greater good in our world for all people. So we join in consciousness and we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, our aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews, everybody we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye, and in our mind's eye, we surround them with an energy of love and peace and healing, and we know that there is a place within them that is pure God, it's pure love itself, and we call that forth into greater expression. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So from our own heart today, we imagine we see an energy of light, an energy of love, an energy of consciousness just enfolding our entire globe, touching all people everywhere as an energy of healing and an energy of love and an energy of peace. And we claim that everything that needs to be healed and brought to the light for healing and release so that our world can work for everyone in a more healthy, satisfactory, loving way, we know that that's taking place right now. And so we bless our church and all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is raising up, that there is healing for all of us and the world that we live in. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing our song one time together. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed, I am 
so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Thank you so much, Darius. You can get Darius's music at DariusLux.com. So please support him that way. Let's show some love and appreciation. You know, show those clappy hands or whatever you get out there for uh, wonderful musicians, Sam and Karen, and of course, Dean, who's been leading our chants. Um, so once again, thank you for joining us today. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we will be in the church office for 30 minutes after the service um, to accept donations if you would rather call them in and give us an ATM or a, a debit or a credit card over the phone. 
So that'll be till about 11 o'clock, a few minutes after 11. Or if you missed the link, uh, you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. Uh, please know that after the service, if you'd like to have prayer with a practitioner, a one minute miracle as we call them, uh, that'll be available for about 30 minutes after the service on Zoom. So if you're currently on with us through Facebook Live, just uh, move over to our Zoom um, connection and uh, you can get prayer with the practitioner that way. You can also email any prayer requests you might have to our uh, email address, prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office, 818-762-7566 and choose the option for the Ministry of Prayer to leave us a message of a prayer request you might have that we can send out to our practitioners. Or if you just want to be uplifted in prayer, middle of the day, you need a boost, uh, call the same number and uh, select the option for dial prayer and you will hear a pre-recorded uh, prayer from one of our practitioners. We have our Wednesday evening service, as usual. This Wednesday, the meditation starts at 6.50 p.m. Service is at 7. We invite you to join us via Zoom. And my topic this Wednesday is when wills collide. Okay. Uh, we invite you to stay informed and up to date uh, with uh, what's going on here via our website, again, nhcrs.org. You can sign up there also to get our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters if you're not getting those to keep you updated on what's happening. Uh, feeding the homeless, our love and kindness ministry will drop off food for the homeless today at Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission in Pacoima and also in the North Hollywood area. And if you're interested in supporting this ministry, you can contact Gilda Gomez at loveandkindness1919 at gmail.com. I believe this information is being posted for you at the same time. Um, also, after the service, we have our Zoom virtual patio. So if you're on Zoom with us and you want to visit with fellow congregants like we used to on the patio, um, please do that. That happens before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. And we also have a virtual reception line with Dr. Mark and myself and Reverend Nadine when she can join us. Um, other things that are happening on Zoom on a regular basis are youth church for ages 5 through 11. Uh, they meet on Zoom every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Our teens, 12 through 19, meet via Zoom every Sunday at 9.45 and Wednesday at 7.30. The men's group meets every Sunday uh, between 11 and 11.30. All men are welcome. And we have a Zoom meditation Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. It's a 15-minute meditation. All that information you can get on our website, again, nhcrs.org. Uh, with that, again, we just really want to thank you for joining us, for being with us, for supporting us the way you continue to support us. We want to say again, happy, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And I know we have a couple here in the room as well. So happy Father's Day to all of you. And uh, let us join one more time in song with the peace song.
So please repeat after me, I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.